Hi, my name is Caroline Bartman, and I'm a graduate student in the labs of Garib Blowell and Arjun Raj, and I'll be telling you about our paper examining the enhancer regulation of transcriptional bursting parameters revealed by forced chromatin looping. When cells are studied in bulk using qPCR, we say that a gene is on or off. However, when an individual locus in mammalian cells is imaged over time, it flickers on and off, producing RNA in bursts. This bursting phenomenon leads to transcriptional variability between similar cells. In a population, one cell could be transcribing a given gene and one not at the same time. It can also result in variability in RNA levels between cells and consequently between protein levels. We know very little about how these bursting events may be regulated at a molecular level. For example, what happens when transcription of a gene is increased during cellular differentiation? The gene could transcribe more of the time, which we will call a higher burst fraction, or it could transcribe just as often but produce more RNA molecules per transcriptional event, which I'll call higher burst size. Or both these parameters could increase. Different groups have observed each of these three options in various genes in various settings. However, we don't have a clear understanding of the molecular regulation of these choices. This is the question we set out to answer. In this study, we used single molecule RNA fish to study bursting parameters. When a gene is transcribed, both introns and exons are copied into RNA. However, the introns are quickly spliced out and degraded. This means that if we use RNA fish probes specific to introns, these probes will only stain nascent RNA present at an actively transcribing locus when the cells were fixed. To measure what fraction of the time a gene is firing, we find the average number of transcription sites per cell in the population. To measure approximately how many RNA molecules were produced per transcriptional burst, or the burst size, we quantify the fluorescence intensity of the transcription site, which scales with the number of nascent RNA present at the transcription site. I chose to study the regulation of these bursting parameters at the beta globin locus, which encodes the hemoglobin protein in red blood cells. First, I used a mouse red blood cell line called G1E ER4 cells. They start in a precursor state, and when we add a drug, they undergo differentiation and upregulate hemoglobin production. What you can see from these images is that transcription of the globin gene becomes more frequent later in differentiation. Burst size also increases, which you can see by an increase in fluorescence intensity of the transcription sites. You can see that in multiple experiments, taking several time points in differentiation, both burst fraction and burst size of the globin gene increase. Next, we examined how the increases in burst fraction and size might be regulated at a molecular level. First, we used CRISPR-Cas9 technology to delete the enhancer that controls the globin gene, which is known as the locus control region, or LCR. In the two independent enhancer deletion clones we generated, both burst fraction and burst size of globin are decreased. If we look at the quantification, burst fraction is reduced by about 300-fold, while burst size is also significantly reduced, but by about 3-fold. This suggests that this enhancer chiefly turns on the globin gene by increasing burst fraction, though it also increases burst size. Next, we specifically created a contact between the globin enhancer and the promoter. A previous graduate student in the lab, Wulan Deng, showed that if we express a protein that forces a loop between the globin enhancer and promoter, we can activate transcription of globin. We force this loop by expressing a protein that binds at the globin promoter and dimerizes with a protein present at the enhancer. Strikingly, this approach strongly increased burst fraction, but did not change burst size. These findings have several implications. First, they show that burst fraction and burst size can be controlled independently. Second, they suggest that enhancer promoter contact frequency governs how often the promoter fires. Perhaps, 
Each time the enhancer contacts the promoter, the promoter undergoes a transcriptional burst. This model would suggest that enhancer-promoter contacts are quite dynamic. How then does the enhancer influence burst size? Perhaps enhancer gene body contacts promote transcriptional elongation, which could produce the increase in globin burst size that we see when we differentiate red blood cells. As I mentioned earlier, all the above experiments were carried out in a mouse cell line. I also repeated these experiments in primary human cells to examine if the molecular regulation of globin transcriptional bursting is conserved. I isolated precursor cells from human blood and differentiated them into red blood cells. Globin burst fraction and burst size increased during maturation in human cells, like in mouse cells. And if we expressed a similar looping factor to force enhancer promoter contact in human cells, we again increased burst fraction of globin but not burst size. The final step in our study was to further explore the idea of dynamic enhancer promoter looping. The human cells gave us a unique opportunity to do this. In adult human blood cells, two forms of beta globin are expressed. These cells mostly make adult globin, but there's a low residual expression of fetal globin, which is mostly turned off after birth. We know from previous studies that both these genes rely on the same enhancer. So does the enhancer flip back and forth between the genes, allowing each to fire in turn? Specifically, two models could be proposed for how these neighboring genes are transcribed. If they compete for the enhancer, we wouldn't expect them to be transcribed simultaneously very often. If the enhancer could act on both simultaneously, or if the genes don't need to contact the enhancer every time they fire, the genes on the same allele can fire together. Since the fetal and adult globin genes are so close together, if they fire at the same time, we can detect transcription sites on top of each other, as shown in this image. We examined human cells and performed a statistical analysis. Are fetal and adult globin transcribed simultaneously by chance, or less than you would expect by chance? We found that fetal and adult globin tend to be transcribed together less than you would expect by chance. This suggests that globin genes located on the same DNA strand compete with each other for enhancer activity, and further supports our theory that enhancer-promoter contacts are formed, quickly broken, and reformed. To summarize all our findings, we've seen that both burst fraction and burst size of the globin gene are controlled by the globin enhancer. Especially burst fraction is decreased if the enhancer is absent. Enhancer promoter looping specifically controls burst fraction. And we've shown evidence to suggest that promoter enhancer contacts may be quite dynamic.